Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're taking a look at the Radeon RX 7900 XT. And no, you didn't watch this video yesterday. This is the XT version, not the XTX. I know a super dumb naming choice there by AMD, which I'd probably go as far to say is anti-consumer. As Tim noted in his RDNA3 news video, there are enough numbers available, so AMD could have easily avoided having two different products with almost identical names. There's really no excuse for this sort of crap, so do better AMD. And with that, let's roll the ad spot. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Hetzner. Hetzner is a leading hosting provider and data center operator in Europe with hundreds of thousands of servers in operation. By combining its strengths in innovative technology, attractive prices, expert support, and flexible customer service, Hetzner expanded its market both within and outside Europe. They operate their very own high-tech data centers in Germany and Finland. Hetzner also offers high-performance cloud servers for an amazing price. And not only this, Hetzner is now already covering both the east and west coast of the United States with their latest location in Hillsborough, Oregon. Now, you can deploy cloud servers in five different locations and benefit from features like load balancers, block storage, and more. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so the name sucks and I wasn't blown away by the XTX version. So is there any hope for the XT? Not really. It's $100 cheaper than the XTX, so a mere 10% saving, but the memory capacity, cache, and bandwidth has all been reduced by 17%. And surprise, surprise, it's 17% slower at 4K. So the cost per frame is actually worse. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll continue with the review anyway. So for those of you who haven't already moved on to another video, I guess I'll tell you a bit more about the 7900 XT before jumping into the benchmarks. But yeah, I'm not gonna drag this one out. The 7900 XT is clearly a product AMD doesn't really wanna sell, suggesting that they don't have that many defective 300 mm square GCDs. As noted in the 7900 XTX review, the XT version uses the same die, but with a one less MCD, so five rather than six. And what this means is any GCD that can't be sold as an XTX gets binned as an XT. So it would seem as though the strategy right now is to cash in on RDNA3's hype, try and sell the 7900 XT for top dollar, and really AMD has little to lose with this approach, apart from momentum, market share, and any kind of relevancy with gamers. So yeah, very little. Oh, and of course, positive reviews. At $900, they can certainly forgo reviewers getting excited about the 7900 XT. So assuming this has little impact on sales and general consumers buy this product anyway, AMD will have made the right move. In reality, the 700 XT is going to be a model that moves in very low volumes. And again, this could be due to the fact that AMD has very little defective silicon that they need to flog off. But if that isn't the case, you can expect 7900 XTs to drop in price before too long. Anyway, as you can probably tell, I'm none too excited about the 7900 XT. So let's just go over the test system specs and then I'll show you some results. Now for our benchmarks, all GPUs have been tested at the official clock specifications, so no factor overclocking. The CPU used is the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with 32 gigabytes of dual rank, dual channel DDR4 3200CL14 memory on the MSI MPG X570S Carbon Max Wi-Fi motherboard. In total, I've tested 16 games at 1440p and 4K, so let's get into the data. Starting with the Callisto protocol, we see that at 1440p, the 700 XT is 11% slower than the XTX and just 5% slower than the RTX 4080. It's also 35% faster than the 6900 XT, a two-year-old product that launched at $1,000 US. The 4K margins are really much the same. The 7900 XT was 14% slower than the XTX version, though this time 11% slower than the RTX 4080. The margin over the 6900 XT also shrank to 28%, so that's a bit disappointing. Next up, we have Forza Horizon 5, and here the 7900 XT was just 9% slower than the XTX, though I suspect there is some kind of driver-related issue here, as RDNA 3 performance in general is very weak in this title, especially relative to what we see in other titles when compared to RDNA 2. For example, the 700 XTX was a mere 5% faster than the 6900 XT, and as a consequence was actually slower than the 6950XT. The 4K results are mildly improved. Here the 7900XT was 12% slower than the XTX, and rather than trail the 6950XT, it's 2% faster, so yay. 
Then moving on to Rainbow Six Extraction, we see that the 7900 XT is good for 238 FPS on average, making it 15% slower than the 7900 XTX and 17% slower than the RTX 4080, while it was 28% faster than the old 6900 XT. Then at 4K, the frame rate drops to 119 FPS, making the 7900 XT 17% slower than the XTX version and 25% slower than the RTX 4080. It was also just 5% faster than the RTX 3090, but 35% faster than the 6900 XT. The Hunt Showdown performance overall is very impressive with over 200 FPS, but relative to competing parts and previous generation GPUs, it's nothing special. We're looking at an 18% deficit to the 7900 XTX, while it was just 22% faster than the 6900 XT, the two-year-old product that it's effectively replacing. Well, the XTX does that, but with pricing so similar, you could say they both do. Anyway, at the 4K resolution, the 7900 XT fell well behind the XTX, now trailing by a 20% margin, allowing it to only roughly match the RTX 3090, while it was just 15% faster than the 6900 XT, so overall, quite a disappointing result. Like all Radeon GPUs, the 7900 XT does its best work in Call of Duty, pumping out 269 FPS in the Modern Warfare 2 title. That made it 14% slower than the XTX model, but an impressive 23% faster than the RTX 4080 and 40% faster than the 6900 XT. So great results here, though as we found in the XTX review, these results are unfortunately outliers. Even at 4K, the 7900 XT was impressive with 163 FPS on average, making it 16% slower than the XTX model, but 14% faster than the RTX 4080. It was also 35% faster than the 6900 XT, which is a decent generational improvement. The F122 results look very disappointing, as this game enables ray tracing by default when using the ultra high quality preset. And while RDNA 3 has made great strides here, there's still at least a generation behind Nvidia when it comes to RT performance. As a result, the 7900 XT was only able to match the 3080 Ti and 3090, making it 11% slower than the 3090 Ti and 15% slower than the 7900 XTX. Even at 4K, the margins are very similar. Here, the 7900 XT was again basically only able to match the 3080 Ti and 3090, making it 13% slower than the 3090 Ti, so a very disappointing result here that's a result of having RTFX enabled. The Cyberpunk 2077 results are far more impressive, as for this testing, we don't have RTFX enabled. In fact, we're only using the high quality preset. And as a result, the 7900 XT was good for 118 FPS on average, making it just 13% slower than the XTX and a mere 8% slower than the RTX 4080. Then at the 4K resolution, we're looking at roughly 60 FPS on average without the aid of upscaling, so that's pretty good. The 700 XT was 16% slower than the XTX version though, so given it's only 10% cheaper, that's not great. But when compared to the old 6900 XT, we are looking at a 31% performance uplift. As we found in the 7900 XTX review, these new RDNA 3 GPUs don't perform particularly well in Dying Light 2, especially relative to previous generation parts. For example, the 7900 XT is just 8% faster than the 6900 XT at 1440p. And things are even worse at 4K. The 7900 XT was just 6% faster than the 6900 XT, matching the 3090 Ti with 60 FPS on average, though it was just 15% slower than the RTX 4080. So when compared to current generation parts, the results don't look too bad, but also not that impressive when compared to the previous generation models. The last game we're going to look at the individual results for is Halo Infinite, so we're only going to take a look at the results for 9 of the 16 games tested before taking a look at the 16 game average data. At 1440p, the 700XT matched the RTX 3090 Ti, making it just 12% faster than the 6900XT. Then at 4K, we're looking at 82 FPS on average, which meant the 7900XT was 15% slower than the 7900XTX, and 20% slower than the RTX 4080. Okay, so here's a look at the 16 game average data at 1440p. Previously, we found that the 7900 XTX and RTX 4080 were neck and neck. And here we see that the 7900 XT is 13% slower on average, which isn't amazing given that it is only 10% cheaper than the XTX. It's also just 9% faster than previous generation flagship parts, which probably seems okay for $900, but given today's pricing, that's really not amazing. 
The 4K data is even worse, as here all other system limitations are basically removed, giving the high-end GPUs a bit more breathing room. As a result, the 7900 XTX is now on average 17% slower than the XTX version, and then when compared to sensible previous generation options such as the 6800 XT, it was 34% faster. And while that might sound like a lot, remember, the 6800 XT was released two years ago now at $650 US, making the 7800 XT's MSRP 38% higher, and worse still, the 6800 XT has been selling below MSRP for most of the year. For those of you interested, here's the 1080p data. Basically, if you're playing at lower resolutions or with lower quality settings, these new high-end GPUs aren't great in terms of value as frame rate performance is almost always CPU limited. Now here's a look at ray tracing performance at 1440p and really there are no surprises here as the 7900 XT scales as expected relative to the XTX model. So whereas the 7900 XTX was 15% slower in F122 using the ultra quality preset, which does enable RTFX, using FSR to upscale saw a very similar 14% margin between the XT and XTX. The Watch Dogs Legion results were also as expected with RT disabled. We were CPU limited at 1440p, so the XT was just 4% slower than the XTX. But with RT enabled, it was 13% slower, which is pretty typical given what we've seen so far. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy saw the 7900 XT trail the XTX by an 11% margin with ray tracing enabled plus upscaling, and then 13% at the native resolution with ray tracing enabled. So 84 FPS on average made it 25% faster than the 6950 XT, but 24% slower than the RTX 3090 Ti. Here we see when using FSR2 with ray tracing enabled that the 7900 XT was 18% slower than the XTX and then 15% slower with upscaling disabled. So again, these are margins that you'd expect to see given the specifications and of course everything that we've seen up until this point. And finally, here's the Cyberpunk 2077 ray tracing performance and at 1440p using the ultra effects, the 7900 XT was good for just 35 FPS on average or 59 FPS with FSR enabled making it 13% slower than the XTX model and a massive 29% slower than the RTX 3090 Ti. On paper, the 7900 XT is claimed to consume 55 watts or less than the XTX, and we're seeing pretty close to that in our total system testing. I'm not going to talk about all the data, rather I'll just show you the results on the screen. In short, the 7900 XT lowered total system usage by between 48 and 53 watts in our testing when compared to the XTX model. So around a 9 to 12% reduction in total system usage for a 13 to 17% decrease in performance. So even in terms of power usage, the 7900 XT isn't impressive. Of course, if we were to look at just GPU power usage, it would be more like a 15% reduction, but still nothing amazing. Then with the frame rate locked at 90 FPS in Cyberpunk 2077, we see that the 7900 XT drops total system consumption by 4% when compared to the XTX model. So there is some power saving to be had with fewer active cores and one less MCD, even at the same performance target. Now, while the 7900 XTX does represent the best cost per frame ratio of any GPU released in the last two years, the slightly cheaper 7900 XT doesn't. In fact, we're looking at a rather large 8% increase in cost per frame for the XT over the XTX, meaning in terms of value, it's inferior to a number of previous generation high-end products, such as the 6800 XT. It's also only a 13% discount from the RTX 4080, which isn't good enough given how much more well-rounded the GeForce GPU is. Of course, the real issue for the 7900 XT is the XTX. At just $100 more, there is simply no reason to purchase this cheaper cut-down model. You just buy the 7900 XTX every time. And the 7900 XT is even less impressive when looking at the current market prices, basically slotting in alongside the 6900 XT and 6950 XT in terms of value, costing a little more for a little more performance. So RDNA 3 is hardly retiring RDNA 2. There's really no need to draw a comparison with competing NVIDIA products either as the 700 XT makes no sense at $900 when you can buy the 700 XTX for $1000. Before wrapping up the testing, here's a quick look at thermal and clock behavior of the AMD reference model installed inside an ATX case in a 21 degree room. The Radeon RX 700 XT peaked at a hotspot temperature of 77 degrees after an hour of gameplay with a peak average die temperature of 65 degrees 
and this was achieved with a fan speed of 1750 RPM. The typical operating clock frequency was 2055 MHz, and the memory operated 19.9 gigabits per second, so just shy of the advertised 20 gigabits per second. Overall, the reference card ran cool and relatively quiet, so there's that. There's really not much to say about this one. Basically, there is no reason to buy the Radeon RX 7900 XT. You'd always just spend $100 more to get the XTX version. And really for the XT to make sense, it needs to cost at least $200 US less than the XTX. Uh, anything short of that. And again, you might as well just buy the fully fledged model. It's a shame that the 7900 XT would have been something we could have recommended at $800, at least short of a GeForce competitor like the RTX 4070. Instead, the XTX is a much better option, and unfortunately for AMD, that means you might as well just get the GeForce RTX 4080, or wait for a 4070 type competitor. It's a really weird situation where the $900 option is such poor value that you'd really need to spend $1000 US, but if you're going to spend such a massive sum of money on a graphics card, you might as well dig deep for another $200 US and get the RTX 4080 for that DLSS support, NVENC, and vastly superior ray tracing, which kind of sucks because, as we've said, the RTX 4080, well, it kind of sucks at $1,200 US. But with the RTX 4080 at $1,200 US, and is admittedly selling for a little over that right now, but with the MSRP at $1,200 US, the 700 XTX really needs to be $900, and the XT version no more than, say, $750 US. The only advantage of the 700 XT over a part like the RTX 4080 is the VRAM capacity, but really, the 16GB capacity of the GeForce GPU should be more than enough, and I suspect it will be for some time to come. But of course, this will be a comparison that will matter more for the lower end Ada Lovelace GPUs that are yet to be released. That said, pricing for this generation is a far bigger issue than the memory capacity. So while it's great that the 700 XT packs 20 gigabytes of VRAM, it by no means gets it across the line. In fact, I've been so disappointed with the 700 XT that I've requested all AIB partners avoid sending me their custom versions, as I have very little interest in covering them, given that they're just not worth recommending at the current asking price. And with that, I'm done with this review. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to leave a like. Uh, you can subscribe. There's a subscribe button thing. Uh, and we have Float Plane Patreon. So if you want to become a Hammerbox community member, you get access to our exclusive Discord server. Very cool place to hang out and chat. Monthly live streams where we answer your questions live. So if you want to jump in the chat and ask us anything, we answer those. Uh, that's a lot of fun. Behind the scenes content, Q&As. Anyway, probably enough about this, this video. Um, yeah, it was a struggle to get through this one. Very, very boring product given the price. Uh, yeah, I'd, I want to get excited about Harbour again. Come on, guys. Like, Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.